Hello, I'm Vladimir Peransky and welcome to Advanced Composition. In this particular exercise, Lesson 9, we're going to create a little Frankenstein out of an image called Frank. In reality, nobody's going to give you these type of images and you will have to find them and create them on your own on the web. But let's go ahead and start the actual Lesson 9. Uh, we're going to use Bridge to look for our images, which is located under lesson nine, under Munster and makeup, right? So these makeup pieces, nobody's gonna basically give them to you. You have to make them up as a graphic artist. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of it. I'm going to go ahead and open them with Photoshop. So let's find out where we can, under tools, and Photoshop and process collection in Photoshop. Let's see, load files into Photoshop. That's what I was looking for. So this option is kind of buried and you can use this option, uh, which is the same way as just opening all the images in Photoshop and then basically trying to move them all onto the same, onto the same poster board. This saves you the trip. So I'm gonna go ahead and open all of them up. and it's processing and Photoshop is being opened. So all of the images are loading into Photoshop that you can see right here. It's slowly coming in and there's our target Frank right there we see him and all of the images are still being loading, loaded. So here's all the images. So what I usually do is I take the image that we're gonna build on, which is Frank, and move them to the very bottom. I make him the very bottom layer, right? So he is all the way at the bottom. Then I, for this exercise, I basically hide everything except for the mouse and face. So I hide everything, including the hair. And notice everything is kind of red. So everything is in red. I really don't like uh, it being all color coded for me. So I go ahead and turn all that off. So now we see on the screen, we see two things. We see the mask, which is right here. And we see Frank, if we do an overlay, doesn't quite fit. So uh, each particular level has to be, each particular level has to uh, fit and be resized. So the way I do that, since in this particular exercise, I just go ahead and select all the layers. Although I'm only working with the green skin texture, right? So now I selected all the layers and I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna to go to our trusty free transform tool. Now notice all the layers are selected and I'm visually only working with this mask that Frank, the guy uh, in the background will be wearing. So I'm gonna go ahead and resize it. Still too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and resize it more till it fits Frank's perfectly. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Notice the line, see this line right here? That indicates the lips and that's the eyes. So I'm kind of measuring Frank's eyes, still a little bit too big and notice the lips are off. So in order to get it perfect, I'm gonna go ahead and resize it a little bit more. Try to line up the eyes. I think just a little bit more. There we go. I'm just trying to do the lineup on the eyes. And I'm also seeing if this lip ridge fits. See that ridge lip? It almost is there, just a touch more. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller and let's see what we get. That looks right about, that looks almost correct. So at this point, I'm gonna hit okay. Although we hidden all of these other layers, 
we did have them all selected. So all of the layers got resized. So let's go ahead and look at our next layer. Oh, look, Frankie's hair. I'm going to put Frankie's hair all the way on top. So what I'm going to do is put his hair all the way on top and I'm going to line it up with the top of his head, just like that. Look at that, right? What is this? Uh, these are his little screws and the screws will need adjustment because they're still a little bit too big. See that? So they're going to need a little bit free transform action. So I'm going to go edit and free transform these screws, going to make them a little bit smaller so they fit them better, right? Because we can't have missing screws, right? So let's go ahead and move them around, see how they look. Almost there. I think that, that should do it. Click OK. There's the missing screws. Let's see what else. What is this? Oh, this is the eyebrow ridge. Look at that. So that should be right underneath the monster hair. So I'm going to go ahead and position the ridge right on top of his forehead. Perfect. And ear. Uh, I'm seeing an ear on the screen. Where is that ear? I'm not seeing it. Let me zoom out. Where does that ear go? That's the ridge. Those are the bolts. Oh, it's hiding right here. So let's go ahead and grab the ear, zoom in. Now you'll see that once you're in the perfect position for this, you'll see that some of these lines, like this line right here on the ear, will line up and you know you got it perfect. See that line? Do you see the line lining up? Let's see it. See it right there. See that? Right there. See that? Perfect lineup. So we're going to leave that alone. And these pieces, no, like I said before, nobody's going to give them to you. So this particular exercise is unrealistic. But we're going to go through it anyway. So this is some kind of a skin uh, neck flap. So let's go ahead and position that on his neck. Notice this little area will line up with this area so we know we have it pretty perfectly, as perfect as we can. There we go. There's the neck flap. Let's see what else. Green nose. Uh, there is the nose. Let's go ahead and stitch it up. And notice I'm looking at these lines and this line should meet this line. So let's go ahead and look at that and you'll see it when it meets. Look at that. Let's see, is it almost perfect? There you go. I think it's perfect right there. Okay, there's the nose, skin texture, and there is Frank. Right, he looks pretty good. Now, in order to make it convincing, we need to change his pink collar that he is into a green collar. So let's go ahead and use the drop tool to select a green collar that we want the skin to be. I just went ahead and selected the green collar and we'll, we just can't color it. We need to select his face and his hands. So let me see if I'm, I'm gonna try to do something different than the book does. I'm gonna use a magic wand tool and see if I can select his face and hands. Well, that wasn't very good. Let me go ahead and put the tolerance up to 80%. Is that better? Not quite. Let me go ahead and, and disable all the eyeballs and see what we're selecting. Not quite. Let's see if we go to 75%. Deselect and we select the hands. That looks pretty good. Uh, not exactly what I had in mind. Not quiet. See all the overlap? I don't like the old, old, see the image? It's not selecting really closely. Let's go ahead and go to 80%. Deselect, reselect. Not happy. So I'm not gonna use the magic wand tool. I'm just gonna use 
the quick select. Or let me see what else I can use. I think I'll just use the quick select. And instead of selecting everything, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and say select pixels. So we select it automatically, everything gets selected. And now I'm gonna deselect what I don't want. I want his hair, I want all of this to be selected, but I don't want his shirt. There we go, that looks good. But wait, let's, we're not, we don't wanna color this little strap green, so right, so right now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave it alone, and we're gonna modify a few things after we create a, I'm gonna use a mask. The book is gonna use something else. I love using masks, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a mask but I don't want to create a mask on this layer. I'm going to add a new layer on top and say green Frank, right? And I'm going to use this mask and I'm going to place a mask on this particular, on this particular uh, layer. And I noticed that my mask, my computer is giving me a problem again. See this, I'm not able to create a mask. So let me see if I can go ahead and create a mask a different way. I'm seeing, uh, the reason I'm seeing my computer is giving me a problem is because notice it doesn't release, right? And I know I should be able to create a mask layer. Let's see if it gives me an option to create a layer mask. Uh, it's let me do a vector mask, but not a layer mask. So why not, right? It's not letting me do that. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do an edit and I'm gonna do a fill. I can still do that. And I'm gonna do that, the foreground color, which is this green, I'm gonna go ahead and do a foreground color, which is green. This is one way of creating the Frank color right? This is not the way, this is the way the book has you do it. This is not the way I would do it, but the results are the same. So we dropped the opacity, not too much, and that's the way the book has it done. Uh, deselect, not particularly the way I do it. Let me show you the way I do this. So let me go ahead and save this. File, save as and I'm gonna save it to my computer. I'm saving it because, because I am, my Photoshop is giving me an issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and close Photoshop and I'm gonna reopen it. And once it's reopens, I'm going to go ahead and share it. There it is. My Photoshop is reopened. I'm gonna go ahead and share it. And I'm gonna open up my Frank picture that I'm cre creating. There we go. And now, I'm gonna show you a different way of doing this. The way I do this image and the way I work with it is I'm going to go ahead and create a mask. First of all, I'm gonna, before I create a mask, I'm gonna go ahead and create a color object. I'm gonna click on Frank and I'm gonna click on solid colors or let me see. Uh, hue saturation, let's see, color balance. I'm gonna do hue and saturation, color lookup, vibrance. Let me see which one, what I'm looking for. Hue and saturation, color balance, black and white, photo filtering, channel mask. I'm gonna do hue and saturation. There we go, right? And instead of doing a hue and saturation with this weird blank mask, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the pixels we selected earlier. And I'm gonna click on hue and saturation and I'm gonna create a mask. 
right? I just selected the pixels on green Frank since I already made a selection. And now I went ahead and there's my hue and saturation, which is going to be in the mask form. And I'm going to go ahead and modify this mask. Remember the reason I'm gonna modify this mask is because if you look closely, the ring and the elbow, these areas are gonna be also selected by, with green. So let's go ahead and show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and make him green. At least try to make him green. He's a little like yellow like this, right? The color is a little bit on the yellow. I'm trying to select the color closely matching Frankie. Okay. Let's see how he looks. Oh, he's a little yellow. He looks a little jaundiced, huh? So let's go ahead and There we go. And we can adjust this. See, the good thing is about hue and saturation, we can adjust how he looks, right? Adjust how he looks a lot. Let's leave it alone. Let's go ahead and fix a few things on this image. We'll come back to this when we transfer him to a different location. So let's go ahead and fix uh, this particular mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush tool. And I'm gonna, uh, hide certain areas. So for instance, his ring is supposed to, the ring doesn't change because he changed, his skin color changed, doesn't mean the ring changes, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and basically just color in the ring, right? Because the ring doesn't change because his skin color changes, right? It's still gold. So let's go ahead and give him that ring back because there's Mrs. Frankie somewhere in the neighborhood, right? So let's go ahead and give this back to him. There we go. And the next thing we're gonna give him back is his bracelet, which is a nice bracelet. And we're gonna make sure he has it. So I'm just, uh, and as you recall, I'm just drawing on the actual, I'm just drawing right on the mask, right? And I'm hiding and revealing things. And of course, I'm gonna reveal this little piece of string that he has. And there's the string, right? So, and I'm going to, wipe this part, clean this part up, his sleeve, right? Clean this up a little bit for him. We would definitely want a clean sleeve. Anything else we need to clean up? In our selection, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and clean up his eyes while we're here. Let's, because you know, his eyes should not be green, right? So let's go ahead and clean up his eyes a little bit. There we go. That's his eyes being cleaned up. I know, he looks a little scary with those eyes cleaned up like that, right? So let's go ahead and create, let's go ahead and view everything else, right? Let's go ahead and view everything and see how we did on the collar. Did we, did we do okay on the collar? What do you think, guys? The one thing we don't want to show is this particular, we don't need this green freak, uh, Frank. We don't need that color. We just basically need this color. And now we can actually modify more of the color to match our guy. So it's darker and it's a little bit less red and it's a little bit more darker. There we go. How is that? See how I came back to it? And this allows you a good and quick way to modify the color. Now notice the details in his hands. We can still see it and look how green we got the hands to look. Whereas if we did this, 
look at the detail that we lose by dropping the opacity and doing it the green frank, the way the book tells us to do it. I don't like the way this looks. It looks really cheesy. Now, yeah, you can make a darker color, right? You can select a darker color and go, you know, select pixels. And then you can go edit fill again, right? Fill, foreground color. And I don't like the way that looks. It just, you, it just doesn't look right. So let's go, get, go ahead and get rid of it and bring back the hands. Look at that. Look at the detail we have in the hands. We don't lose any of the detail because we're using a hue and saturation to adjust the color. Isn't that good? So this, what the book doesn't do, this is something extra that I do because it just looks better. Okay, now we got all of these images and now we've got to get, get all of these images transferred to our other board, which is the background. In the book, they're going to tell you to flatten it. I'm against flattening the images, as you know, guys. I will not give you a grade if you do flatten. What I recommend is creating a group. And this is called Frank. I'm going to call this Frank group, right? And that's what it is, Frank group. So I'm going to take this Frank group, control, disable, right? Uh, control D to deselect. I'm going to use this group to copy this group to I'm going to copy this group to our file that we're going to open. File, open. We're going to open a new file called background, backdrop. See that? So there's, oh, I already have a Frank in here. So let's go ahead and get rid of this Frank. This is the, I saved it by accident. Um, let me go ahead and delete this Frank out of here, right? I'm going to just take this Frank, delete it. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take all of the things that I've done, and I'm just basically deleting all of the things that I've done. And I'm able to do that because everything is in a separate layer. So I'm able to delete everything, perfect, except for the background, the way it initially was. So now I'm gonna, there's my background, there is my Frank, I'm gonna take my Frank and I'm gonna drag to the background. There we go. So now I just took the whole folder out of Frank and I dragged this folder to the background. I don't need this Frank anymore, so I can go ahead. I don't need this anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and click close. And I don't wanna save it. So now we have Frank and I'm gonna put him right over here. And now I can move the entire Frank with all these sub layers together. But before we can move all of them, because right now, if I try to move one, look, I'm going to try to move his face, right? Notice when I move Frank, I have a group selected. If you have layer selected, when you try to move something, you just get a piece of his face. So change this to a group. And then you can just click on the group, Frank, and move it all in one piece, like I am doing right now. See that? So all of these layers are, move, uh, are moved together in, this, in unison. And I'm gonna have the title, perfect. There's my Frank. So we need two more pieces. We need a tombstone and we need upscale and image. So now we're going to go ahead and upscale a bad image that is actually uh, pretty small. Um, and I'll show you how to deal with, with upscaling an image. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and file open and we're gonna open this face image that is pretty low quality. And it's a low quality image because we know that if we are 100% and it's a pretty small image. Look how small it is, right? So if we zoom in, see how pixelated it gets at 500, 300? See, it's not very good, right? So let's go ahead, unlock the image, and let's go ahead and upscale the image. 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and go to images and we're gonna go to image image size and over here we're gonna select the upscale we're gonna upscale it to 400 percent notice how poorly it looks at 400 percent but we can go ahead and resample it let's go ahead and resample it at this is this is the way it, it looks initially and we're going to reduce the noise and i usually going to go to 100 percent. i want to make it as smooth as possible see that so now the image is going to be much much better looking it was 182 it becomes three megs we don't get it, the image back but we get pretty close so there's my image now Notice that when I zoom in, it doesn't get pixelated at 300% anymore. See that? It's not a sharpest image, but that's okay. This will do. Now I'm just gonna take this image and I'm going to copy it. Control A, copy the image and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm gonna place it in this location. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the elliptical tool. I'm gonna put feather, uh, a leaf feather at 50, 50 pixels and style, fix ratio, fix size. I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and draw a circle right here. In this particular circle, which I've actually ellipt used the elliptical tool to create a marquee, right? A marquee, elliptical marquee. I'm gonna go ahead, edit, excuse me, uh, edit, and I'm gonna paste the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste special, and I'm gonna place paste into. I'm gonna, it's gonna it tell me a few things that, that it's gonna be pasting an image into a document. I'm gonna accept that. And there is my image being placed into the document. The next thing I need to do, again, this is just a regular mask over here that we have. We can adjust the mask. If you made this image too small, you can readjust the mask and make it a little bit larger, right? Uh, over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and select luminosity. And I'm gonna drop the opacity a little bit to get that ghostly look. There we go. There's that ghostly look. So the next thing we, we all, the, the only thing we have left is the most trickiest part of this entire assignment. And that is the tombstone. So let's go ahead and go edit, file open, and let's open up the tombstone. Okay, before we import it, let's go ahead and I'll work with it now you can do you can do what the book tells you to do but the problem is the rest in peace will not be white it will not miraculously turn to white so what i would recommend you do is to use a magic magic wand make sure you deselect continuous let's see if we can select the black color nope deselect let's see 50 percent i'm just trying to select the black color without selecting anything else deselect let's go ahead and go for 100 percent let me see if this will work deselect let's go for 25 percent see how that works there we go that's what I was trying to accomplish. But notice the wings are not there yet. So let's go ahead and go for 15% deselect. I'm trying to get 30%. Notice I'm trying to get this, these wings as well. See those wings inside? I'm not getting that. How about 50% deselect? Okay, that looks better. I'm not really sure why it selected this part right here, but what I can do is, yeah, um, what I can do is I can use a different tool and deselect that part. So what I'm gonna, which tool am I gonna use? I'm gonna use a quick select and I'm gonna subtract. 
I'm surprised that it's not letting me subtract that. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract this portion. Okay, deselect. Let me go ahead and try a different setting. Magic wand tool, let's see 60%. There we go, that's much better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer and I'm going to go ahead and fill the layer. Let me see, do I wanna fill the layer? Yeah, I'm gonna edit and I'm gonna fill the layer with white. Edit and fill. And I'm going to choose a color. And I'm gonna choose gray. Okay. And that's gonna be my rest in peace white. This is my rest in peace stone, right? So there we have our white or light color, which will resemble these other stones that, let's, let, let's get rid of this, we don't need this one anymore. This will resemble these stones and the white lettering on these stones. If we zoom in, we'll notice we have white lettering, right, on all of these. See that? And notice that because I have the letters, I can actually make them in, in, in boys, see that? So I can actually go back in here and I can actually add a special effect to this rest in peace and em embroider this. There we go, look, look how it's already looking. Uh, contour text, uh, let's see. Let's see how we're gonna make it like that. Smooth inner. We're gonna do ara. Oh, that looks interesting. Uh, depth. Let's go ahead, size. Let's make the size small. There we go, soft. Mm. And let's go ahead and make, that looks interesting. I'm just looking at different, oh, that looks interesting. That looks like it's been cut out. That looks very interesting. So that looks nice. I like the way this looks. Let's go ahead and click okay. Okay, so now I, this is going outside the book. I'm just trying to make it look kind of nice and see what we can, where we can go. Now the next thing I'm gonna go, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And I'm gonna select pixels. And I'm gonna render clouds. So I'm gonna go ahead and filter. If you remember from a previous exercise, we're gonna render some clouds. And there are some clouds that we render. And of course, they want us to drop the opacity of the clouds a little bit. Let's go ahead, how much we're gonna drop. Let's see, maybe 40%. Okay, so now we have our clouds, we have our things, we have all these layers. Now let's go ahead and try to change image color. But so right now, they're gonna have you do a certain look and they're gonna have you, uh, the book is gonna have you do uh, some other layers, they're gonna have you do some blur effects, all, and they're gonna have you use this panel. Here's the problem, when you use this adjustment panel up here, well, let's try it. Notice, you can use this panel or you can use change colors. So let's go ahead and adjust this tombstone to a different color. Let's go ahead and say green. So I'm just adjusting to the green color, right? 
And what else do they have us do? They're gonna adjust the, the color, they're gonna adjust the brightness of it. So let's go ahead and adjust the brightness. I'm going to go ahead and undo that, what I just did. I'm going to select the tombstone and I'm gonna adjust the brightness. And the, re uh, the reason I'm doing what I'm doing right now, I'm doing the selections because I don't wanna use clipping masks. I mean, can I use clipping masks? Yes, but then it's extra stuff that I have to remember because if I don't use clipping mask and I don't use this mask or clipping masks, when I transfer this image to my main content, all of these color adjustments are going to bleed into my layers below because this is not gonna be, there's gonna be more layers below this and all of these adjustments are gonna bleed in. So they, they, this way, when I select pixels and create masks, they only apply to this particular area. So let me go ahead and create this mask right here, which is gonna be the, the brightness of the image. Let me move this rest in peace to the bottom. Uh, actually, I like the red rest in peace on top. Yeah, okay. Let me go ahead and create the brightness on top of all of it, including rest in peace. And the reason, let's go ahead and see. Dark and there we go. I'm gonna allow, I'm gonna just stay with this. Again, I'm gonna select all these layers, right? And I'm gonna create a folder and I'm gonna rename this folder to rest in peace. Now I'm just gonna take this folder and drag it to our area where we want it. Click okay. Okay, this is what I meant. Now we see the rest in peace over here and it needs to be below the title but above Frankie. And notice if I wouldn't have these, these uh, masks, every, all these layers below rest in peace, all of the layers below would have been changed colors, right? But because I have the rest in peace, the colors are not changed. So let me go ahead and move this group down, like just like this. And the other thing I'm gonna try to match the color to these particular tombstones over here. So I can go ahead and go back into the rest in peace and I can play with the settings matching the brightness of these tombstones. And now I can go ahead and match this brightness as well. Let's see what we have. And we can get carried away in trying to match it. And of course, we're just playing with the colors, trying to match the brightness as much as we can to these images. And it'll take a little bit of time to try to match this. And it'll take a little bit of time, right? Because we're dealing with uh, channels, we're dealing with, we're also dealing with channels and brightness here, right? So we're dealing with a lot of things that we're sliding back and forth to get our color settings. Right? So anyway, we can play all day with this, but basically I just wanted to match it somewhat to what the book has, right? Now, by the way, the rest in peace, how it's looking, we can go ahead and select the uh, select the pixels, excuse me, select the pixels, edit, select pixels, and we can actually go ahead and change the color on those pixels to edit, fill, and we're gonna fill it with, let's see, this green color, there we go. Let's see how that looks.
edit, fill, and let's select this color right here. Let's see if that's gonna change anything. We're filling it, but I'm not seeing the change. Effect bevel, okay, let me see, effect. That's why it's not, let's go ahead and see if we can, let's see if we can change the color on this. Let's see, gray, green, gray. Let's make, uh, let's make it a bit more green. And gray is going to be a little bit more lighter. I'm just messing around with these colors, see what happens. And this is going way beyond what you guys need to do. Let's see how that looks. Deselect. It looks a little better. Let me go ahead and select pixels. And let me go ahead and change this color to just white. There we go. So there's our finished image, how it looks. Uh, we still have to work on this particular um, uh, rest in peace too, but um, this is what is required to be submitted. Um, again, uh, this is the Frankie that we were talking about. The most important part is the way we did the hands. Oh one thing we did forget to do. Let's go ahead and get out of this tombstone and let's go ahead into Frankie, right? Let's go ahead and look at our Frankie, which is right here. One thing we did forget to do is we forgot to liquefy. And what we forgot to liquefy is this particular mask, right? There's the, the hands, there's the Frankie, but these textures right here, to his face, let's go ahead and filter and liquefy. Notice it's grayed out right now, so let's go ahead and select the mask he's wearing. You know what we can do? We can select all of these and make all of these smart objects, including Frank, convert to smart object. Uh, perfect. But notice what happens. Let's go ahead and move the hands below, right? So now it's a smart object, meaning all of those layers are inside the smart object. If we double click it, there's all of the layers. We can see all the layers underneath it, right? Because this is, this is a smart object now. So let's go ahead and close the smart object. Let's go ahead and now liquefy. Now we have an option called liquefy. 
and now we can look at the Frankie's eyes and we can liquefy that. See that? Look over there, we made them really squinty. Right, let's go ahead and use our pecker tool. Just let's use the pecker tool, pocker tool, excuse me. Uh, control Z, I don't kind of like it. Let me go ahead and see what we can do. Can we move the eye around, see that? Let's go ahead and cancel this. What, I want, what I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing something that I want to do. Let's go ahead and go into this view and let's go ahead and select, there we go. So like this, don't want to do the nose, not the neck, not the ear. I'm trying to find this part. Okay, that and this. And let's go ahead and see if we can liquefy that. Filter, liquefy. Okay, let's, let's see if we can liquefy this. And all I'm trying to do is move things around, but I'm having a little bit of noise face eyes, but the eyes are not allowing me to do anything. So let me cancel that. Let me get out of this. And let me undo the smart filter, right? Let me go back. But smart filters allow you to liquefy, but let's go ahead and just try to do it on the skin tone. Let me go ahead and filter and do liquefy. Let me see if it'll let me do that. Uh, it's not distinguishing between It's not letting me do what I want to do. I might have to restart my computer. It'll let me push, but it won't let me, it won't let, oh, there it goes. Forward warp, that's what I wanted to do. See that? It'll allow me to this is too much, right? So it allow me to move the eye just a little bit so I can position it perfectly. It allow me to move the mouse a little bit for a perfect positioning, right? And of course, any other part of his body can be repositioned in that manner. I can also make his eyes be a little bit more dim Okay, this is the left eye. See this left eye? Look what's happening. Larger, smaller. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back to zero. Eye height. You can see the eye opening and closing, right? And a whole bunch of other parts. Eye displaced. See the eyes are both moving left and right as I'm dragging this, right? And of course, I can do the same thing for the nose, which will take care of the nose. And basically, it senses what the computer is doing and notice the nose is moving, right? A mouth, face shape, put him on a little diet, right? We can lose some weight off of him real quick by see, seeing, uh, let's go ahead and look at the jaw. Let's give him a good jaw muscle, right? Because a good villain has to have a good jaw muscle. So let's go ahead and look at the jawline. There you go, look at that. More plump, skinnier, right? We can do all of the, the different settings. Anyway, uh, play around with this, have fun, um, and ask me any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, this is Vladimir, and I'll see you online.